Greetings, Vault Citizens, Johnny5 Alive here, and welcome back to another Fallout 76 news update video. Lots of stuff to go over today. Are we getting PvP servers? Oh boy. Bethesda has dropped a bunch of news or teases to news coming in early January or mid January. So we're going to talk about it here today. So stay tuned and let's get into it. All right, guys, I'm going to just show you the page here. There'll be a link down in the description below. We're going to read it over and then I'm going to show you guys some gameplay in the background as we discuss what's happening here. So Fallout 76 inside the vault for December 19th, 2018. 2018 is coming to a close, but we're excited to share a little more with you about what you can expect in 2019. Today's hotfix was the last planned update of the year, but we are certainly actively investigating and addressing issues and listening to your feedback. In January, we'll be back with more updates and news on what new content we're excited to share with you. New content, a look ahead to 2019. Our sights are set on future updates. A mid, in mid-January, we'll be releasing another patch that contains many fixes, including fixes for the lever action rifle reload animation and some, and some perk cards, and we're dealing with some crowd control at the White Spring by implementing a fix for the robots duplicating on the resort grounds. Full patch notes will be available in later date that covers all fixes featured in this update. We understand that sometimes the patch notes themselves aren't enough and you want to know why we're making certain balance changes or adjustments. Beginning in 2019, patch notes will include some brief thoughts from our developers that'll hopefully give the community more insight into the changes we're making and why that's really great news we're also hard at work on a new mode where you can work together or not without pvp restrictions we're already having fun playing it at the office and we're hopeful to roll it out to all of you sometime in the first quarter of the year this is just the beginning of new content and continued updates we'll have a lot more to share throughout 2019 Back to the holidays. Next week, our Inside the Vault falls on Christmas to celebrate the holidays. We would like to share the best Fallout 76 cheer. And there's a screenshot in front of Christmas trees. <laughs> A girl in front of Christmas trees doing the peace fingers. During your ventures through the Appalachia, capture your favorite festive photos using photo mode and send them our way using the hashtag holiday76 on Twitter or Instagram. We'll be sharing our favorite images in our feature next week. So if you guys want to get featured in there inside the vault for next week, you can do so by making a picture and tweeting it to hashtag holiday76. There you go. Just clipping this in as I was editing this video, I just realized this is actually a smart marketing ploy by Bethesda to actually get you to buy their new Christmas stuff from the Atom Shop. Because how are you supposed to take a festive photo when those are like the only two Christmas trees that exist in the game and you don't have any Christmas cosmetics other than what you can buy from the Atom Shop? So if you want to get featured, all you got to do is go spend some money <laughs> and they'll be posting the people that are wearing Santa outfits. <laughs> oh, uh, it's kind of a fun little thing, but I kind of expected them to do something for Christmas in terms of in-game or something with the Atom Shop, something free or maybe give us some Atoms. I don't know, just something. And uh, there were some updates to the Atom Shop. So we're going to go in once I'm done talking and go check out the Atom Shop and see what's new there for the holiday event and uh, take a better look at that. But let's speculate for a second. They said we're hard at work on a new mode where you can work together or not without PVP restrictions. So my understanding of that PVP restrictions right now, PVP is restricted because of pacifist mode. I, I couldn't see it being flipped the other way around where they're like, there's it's just a non-PVP mode. I feel like what they're saying is they're removing the PVP restrictions, as in it's full on PVP. Now they hinted at things like factions in the past. So my guess is gonna be it's one of two things. We're either getting some sort of queue that takes us into a battleground or PVP event of some sort, 
where you can work together with your friends or just queue up solo. So I would imagine it would be either a 12v12, maybe even 4v4, some sort of versus battle system that would uh, allow you to queue up as a team. And because the teams are already restricted to four, I would imagine that it would be a 4v4 squad based system or in increments of such. So an 8v8, uh, 12v12, and that sort of thing. So if you just have a squad and you want to go up against another squad, maybe there's some sort of rated arena battle mode of some sort. And maybe it's tied to the faction system that they were hinting out early on before like the game was released, such as we decide to join Team Brotherhood and we're going up against Team Enclave, and that's what we're queued as. And maybe sometimes you get Brotherhood versus Brotherhood and all that sort of thing. That's what I imagine this would would be no PVP restrictions and working together. On the other side, I think this could also mean working together in the Appalachia without PVP restrictions. The game you know and play right now could possibly be getting a PVP mode. In my ideal circumstances, this would be you create a new character that's restricted for PVP on a PVP server, hence without PVP restrictions. There's no turning on pacifist mode. And uh, this could be a very fun game mode. It could be very fun because essentially the stash limit, all the restrictions of the game, the survival features, it doesn't feel too punishing. It doesn't feel like a very tough survival game. But in a PvP server, let's just say you dropped just your junk or more than just your junk. You killed someone, you took their leather armor, you took their weapons. Then all of a sudden what you have is when you, you when you find like a 10 millimeter pistol, you're like, oh, this is good. I'm going to go throw it in my stash box. Then you go out and fight and you get killed. Killed, now you go back to your stash box, pull up that 10 millimeter gun. You're starting from scratch with whatever you had in your stash box. If you're killed and you have nothing in your stash box, you got to craft something and use your materials to create a weapon and kind of start from scratch there. And while this may sound like a dangerous thing or a, a scary thing to some people, it would be pretty balanced in the sense that if I'm level 10, it's only going to throw me on a server with people five levels within my level range so maybe 5 to 15 or 10 to 20 something like that or it'd be like level brackets and then once you're 50 plus everybody's just on the same servers and maybe if uh, i have a friend that's level 50 and i'm level 10 they just can't play with me on these pvp servers until i'm level 50. They, they could do things like that that could be very very fun it's interesting it's an interesting topic but this definitely sounds to me like they're adding in pvp and my guess it's one or the other that I, I i mentioned i'm leaning towards it's going to it's going to be the team arena thing because that seems a little bit more easy to implement but the pvp servers is definitely an option so you know some sort of non-restrictive pvp is probably what bethesda wants to aim for because it's going to drive sales numbers if you think about it there's a lot of people who play call of duty battlefield etc etc they're not interested in fallout because these pvp restrictions they don't like the fact that they could shoot someone and they have to wait to be shot back and they're now they're at a disadvantage it's just not fun for pvp players and looking at the way bethesda is driving the sales of the game and marketing the game they they want to create some sort of hype again and bring new people to this game and that that is going to be the pvp crowd because that is a pretty huge uh, target audience so i would see pvp servers being very likely because that's going to bring in a lot of interest and make the game more like rust you're constantly losing things you're constantly being punished but then by the time you get up a good base and you're you've got good fortifications you know you can kind of hold your own craft yourself a few sets of gear put your best gear away in your stash box sneak out with your team and see how far you can make it and then you might lose everything and have to kind of start fresh from your camp again and then if you really feel like going on a dangerous hunt you can equip all your best gear go with your squad and be very careful I think it would add tons of excitement to the game. It would intensify the game quite a lot. I also like the fact that they said they're going to be talking about the changes they're making and why from now on, because there's a lot of things in the last update that had us all scratching our heads. Why are you nerfing events? Why are you increasing the duration? Why are you nerfing, 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 nerfing when the game needs, you know, just challenges in other ways, not less EXP overall. I want to make new character builds and now it's harder for me to level up to make class guides and the leveling process process wasn't extremely fast but 
now it's feeling a little slower. Um, they also said this, they are gonna be con doing continued content updates for every couple months, and, and uh, they're gonna be sharing that all throughout 2019. I'm curious to know what they're talking about. Now they talked about these vaults opening up, and uh, I was talking to somebody who was doing some data mining, uh, shout out to Matthew, and he was looking at the inf Intel while, while data mining, and he discovered that these vaults seem to be four player dungeon slash operation. So you're gonna get some sort of quest and the way it seems to be structured is if you go into this vault, you know, it's locked for your team and your server. If you die, you get booted out and it's game over. If one, you know, you're, there's no dying. If everybody dies, it's game over. Kind of like Left 4 Dead or like Vermintide. Your whole team has to survive together, see how far they can make it in this vault, get to the end, fight a boss, and get some rewards. Other people on the server are not going to be able to get in the vault until your party either succeeds or fails, so it's a four-man dungeon. However, it being a vault, it's kind of like disappointing. My, my standpoint on vaults is you want to leave vaults, you don't want to enter them. <laughs> I mean, there's some interesting stories in vaults in terms of what, you know, Vault Tech was up to, what kind of experiments they performed, but that's better on like a single player storytelling experience. What are you going to find down there? For Fallout 76, we can almost guarantee we're just going to go in there, there's going to be dead bodies everywhere and hollow tapes. If it's a dungeon, how does that work? Is it overrun by ghouls, super mutants, enclave? what's in there that's going to be dungeon challenge worthy and if if you're going to do a dungeon of any sort why would you pick a vault you know I, I would expect a dungeon to take place in a city where you work your way through kind of like Grafton and you navigate way, your way through and at the end there's a big boss a super mutant swan style boss or a cave or some kind of bunker but not a vault vaults are like houses it's it's, it's an underground house it's supposed to be peaceful and those aren't usually things you want to enter they're usually things you want to leave they've been fully sacked of their supplies everybody in the vault has taken what they needed with them into the wasteland so if a vault were to open up i would want to see npcs coming out of it and you know vault tech it was just an your the experiment you know wasn't a nasty one and there's still survivors inside of these vaults that's what i would like to see um i don't really have too many interests of going into a vault however if they convert a vault into a dungeon i am down for dungeons so i'm really curious to know what their future updates entail let me know what you guys think down in the comments below but we will be covering all that stuff as we get more news going into 2019. now before we end this video off let's go check out the new stuff on the atom shop all right guys and to end off this video we got some new things in the atomic shop to check out here today it's been a while since i checked this out uh explosive new offers limited time antler headbands for seven dollars <laughs> okay <laughs> And then we have the emote wheel. Limited time. How do the antlers are only one day? They're not even going to sell these on Christmas. Emote bundle. Now, here's how I feel about the emote bundle, you guys. It was twelve dollars just the other day. It said it was half price. Uh, and now it doesn't say half price anymore. <laughs> it's like twenty-four dollars for emotes. I feel like these emotes should exist in the game for the holiday season only for free. Like we log in and we have all these new emotes in the game and we get a run around using them and then they disappear after the new holiday or after the holiday event. Do you guys not agree? That's what I think they should do. I don't I don't mind them selling holiday stuff, but they should give us something to play around with to look forward to. Uh, that's limited time because wh whoever buys this, who really wants to use these in February, March? It doesn't really make sense. So I, for me, I feel like, you know, 12 bucks on this. It's kind of a, for a limited time thing, feels a little bit of a waste. What do we have here? The come into town bundle. So we have Santa and Mrs. Claus and some reindeers? What is that? Stuffed rag stag for your camp. <laughs> And some icons. Oh, and you get like a statue? Interesting. Look at the Santa statue. <laughs> oh, you can put the beard on the girl. 
<laughs> oh my goodness. There you go. 20 bucks for a Santa Claus and Mrs. Claus with some bonuses. Mmm. Not the best value. Especially because it's limited time. Although... That feels like you could use it all year round. I don't know. Feels like a... Uh, fancy dress. And a Red Rocket Mega Sign. Oh, it blows up? It launches off. 14 bucks to... <laughs> wow. <laughs> Don't know if that's worth the value. Um, wow. Then there's some new stuff that's been added in. It's a paint for your fat man. For 10 bucks. Ugh. Nuclear glare. 4 bucks. Duke Icon. Uh, see, I don't like the fact that they're selling these because in Fallout 4, you get them for free for finding magazines. I feel like they should have done that with this game. Added some of those hairstyles to unlock by finding magazines. Uh, $6 for a haircut. Ugh. Ugh. And if you guys weren't aware, they did add some stuff in not too long ago with photo mode. I think I recently bought the sharpshooter. They have like a ready stance. The chick. And the tough girl. Um, yeah. So, love to hear your guys' thoughts about the Atom Shop and what you think about it. Me personally, I don't mind it. I don't mind selling cosmetics. I just feel like, here's the thing. I like to spend money on shops. I like to further support the developers even after the purchase of a game. However, these premium prices for a premium triple A $80 game that we paid, I think it paid $110 for Tricentennial. Uh, they're charging me for like, if I were to buy like five of these things, it would be the same cost as my game. There's such premium prices for stuff that we already got for free in Fallout 4. Like a lot of this stuff doesn't make sense. The pricing of uh, 20 bucks for like a power armor paint and it only works on certain power armors it should like if i buy the vault tech paint or does it does it okay it works on a few all right that's good to know but some of them like this i bought that and i think i paid like freaking 10 bucks for it or i used my free atoms i suppose um it only works on leather armor i didn't realize that at the time of purchasing it some of this stuff is overpriced now i get the argument that you can earn this stuff in game but if you guys actually go to the achievements and the challenges you'll look that it's like you get 20 atoms for playing 78 hours in the appellate shower or 76 hours the next achievement is 7600 hours 7600 hours to get next 20 atoms and everything's like that you know kill 7600 ghouls and then the next one is kill 76,000 and then the next one is kill like seven, 76 million or something stupid so there will come a time where you're like I mean already for me there's a time in my game where I just can't earn atoms anymore I can earn them from the dailies and the weeklies but that's like a measly like 500 or something you can earn like five bucks worth of atoms a week. So it would take you a very, very long time to purchase something like a month of grinding, a month of playing to get a power armor paint. So you can earn the stuff in game, but I, it'll come to a, a crawl. Um, and I, I would love to know how much, you know, you guys have earned so far, but I feel like I've only earned about 20,000 total or, or 2000 total, maybe a little bit more, 3000, not quite sure, but it came in pretty quick in the beginning and I blew it all and now it's coming in super slow and I feel like I should have made my choices more wise because these prices are so premium. Now getting back to my original rant, uh, I don't mind paying for stuff like this in games if it's fairly priced. I look at a game like Elder Scrolls Online, Fortnite, uh, what else did I spend a bunch of money on? I don't know, There's there's been games out there. Uh, Overwatch, even though they're loot boxes and it's random, I feel like it's fairly well priced and you, the chances of duplicates are really low. So I don't mind throwing, every time I throw 20, 30, 50 bucks towards loot boxes or stuff in a game like ESO, I feel like I come out with a lot of good stuff. If I spend 50 bucks here, I feel like I'm going to get like two power armor paints and a pair of pajamas. It just doesn't feel worth it. And if this stuff was better priced, like, I don't know, a dollar or two, I would I would spend $50 right now and just buy out everything. 
buy out a lot of stuff, all the stuff that I want, and they would get $50 from me. Instead, they get nothing from me. So that's the problem with premium pricing, is it's either you get, you know, you convince consumers like me to spend in, or you scare us off. And they're doing the scare off me method, and I'll just grind my way through game and, I mean, five bucks for a chair? Are you kidding me? Seven dollars for a stash box, five dollars for a sleeping bag. Some of this stuff is just ridiculous in my opinion. Six dollars for a piece of floor. I mean, a lot of this stuff is just like, come on. So, uh, yeah, what do you guys think of it? I think it's what way too premium priced and looking at the holiday event stuff, you know, it's the holidays after all. And they, they kind of had a bad rap with this game. You'd think they would kind of come forward and say, here's some holiday gifts from us to you. Nope, pull out your wallet. <laughs> oh boy. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this update video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for all Fallout 76 news and updates, funny videos, and guides. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.